world that is dying out there, as we all know, that uh, uh, need, is, is, is in need of a Savior. Amen? Uh, and all of us at one time were uh, unsaved until we gave our life to Jesus Christ. And somebody told me, uh, somebody told you, and uh, the more word of, we get out there, the better. Because this Palm Sunday, that we're thinking about this Palm Sunday, is uh, what Christ came to do. What God had decided to do from the very beginning. Um, and just that being said, with that testimony of what he just showed in the video, and what happened this morning was pretty amazing. Uh, unbeknownst to me, there's... Uh, it, uh, last week we had a simulcast uh, for the for the ladies, and I was here uh, with uh, my brother Rick, and we, we were here all day just to make sure the simulcast, the video and stuff would continue to run. And uh, what we did at the church is we upgraded our, our internet uh, service here, and so we were having a little bit of trouble streaming. You're going, what does this have to do with anything? Just hear me out just for a minute. Uh, we, we were having a problem with uh, streaming the internet, so I was on the phone with QuickCom during the time of the simulcast to go, well, we should be getting a better feed, we should be doing this. And I, uh, every time I called, uh, I would get the same gal, her name was Skyla. And I uh, told her that we were the church here, and, and, what we're, and so we, re, yeah, we had to reset the router, and we had to same, change some channels, and we got it running a little bit better. Um, and... Uh, had a little chance to witness to her on the phone. And so this morning I come in and nobody could get logged into the internet. So I call QuickCom. And the next thing I know, I'm talking to Skyla again. And uh, as we were working on this uh, internet this morning, the problems we were having, uh, she just simply said, I'm not having a good day. And I said, well, I'm sorry to hear that. And uh, uh, I, 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 we will be praying for you. And then she prompted and asked, well, what is your service about? And I went in and told her about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and said, so today is Palm Sunday. Great day to be celebrated. Jesus would come in and I just kind of would give this, um, this testimony. Come on in and, and bring them in. Um, we wanted this Palm Sunday as we got these, some of the kids, again, not everybody will get one but just hand them out randomly. And I said, today is Palm Sunday. And I said to her, I go, do you realize what Palm Sunday is? She says, yeah, it's the day that Christ came in. I go, that's right. They waved palm branches and they put their coats on the ground and Jesus rode in on a donkey. Do you know why he did that? So we could be, so we could be saved. So I took this Sunday, and next thing I know, I, I'll just continue. I took this Sunday, I sh- we were talking to her, um, and she goes, you know, I really needed to talk to you today. I really needed to hear the message. And, and I went into some other things. I said, you know, Scala, whatever you're going through, Jesus Christ took our pain on the cross. No matter the pain you're going through, though you can't see the, the end of whatever it is you're going through. I didn't pry, I didn't ask what was going on. I just knew that she was struggling. And I said, no matter what you do, Jesus said that I am the way, the truth. And he says, you know what? I said, no discipline. I said, you may not be going through this for discipline's sake. But he says, you know, in the scripture says, no discipline is pleasant at the time. But if you allow yourself to get through it and be trained by it, you will be better on the other side and you'll become a better person. You'll be stronger. You'll have more purpose. And then you'll look back and go, God did have a plan in my life. And then she just started crying. And I go, can I pray for you? She said, yeah. I don't know. There all those, I think they're all recorded, aren't they, when, they call, when you call them? But praise the Lord, you know. And, um, and so, you know, just, just from sharing on, the, on, on Palm Sunday and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, uh, it sounded like she had some church background. I don't know if she's going to church right now, but I can guarantee I'll be talking to her again. Okay? Uh, you never know the lives you're going to touch through a Bible. You never know the lives you're going to touch when you can say, hey, this is Palm Sunday. Do you know what Palm Sunday is all about? Palm Sunday is when Jesus comes in. We call it triumphal entry. The disciples look like it as, as the horrific ending. Do you realize he comes in and six days later they're going to put him on a cross? 
Do you know, and I, I, those who weren't here, we've been coming through Matthew 24 and 25, and now we're in Matthew 26. And I, you know, when Jesus came to his disciples, and he, or uh, Jesus came to his disciples came to Jesus. Okay, I got that backwards. If I ever say that, raise your hand. All right. And they go, when is the end of the times? And remember, we were going through this. And so Jesus didn't answer the when question. He says, nobody knows when except God. Not even I know. But I'll tell you what you can look for. And then he would go in and talk about himself. He would bring them in now, reel them back in. And we've been talking about where Jesus says, I am about to suffer for you. And, and later, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the, the Passover and we're going to look at the, the Lord's Supper and what that means. So in this series that we're in, today what we're going to do, if you have your Bibles, you're going to, this is, you can open your Bibles to Matthew 21, because we're going to look at that today, and then we're going to continue on. So today we're going to rewind to the triumphal entry, because everything we've been talking about is after Jesus has come in one final time into Jerusalem. And He's going to come in, and He's only going to go out one way, and that would be on the cross. But he would exit in the triumphal resurrection to beat life so that you and I don't have to die and go nowhere or go to hell. God provided a sacrificial lamb for us. And that lamb is Jesus Christ. Isn't that ironic? And I told you throughout this whole series how they tried to kill Jesus many times. They tried to kill him when he was just barely born. Remember Herod sends out the people and, 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 and it says go and kill every child two and under. They tried to sh- throw him off a cliff and he walked through their midst. It wasn't the only time they were trying to kill Jesus. When they tried to kill Jesus, they couldn't do it. And when they didn't want to do it, they did it. Because God knew the appointed time of when Jesus would go to the cross. His plan has worked out perfectly no matter if man mean, mean it for evil or not. God's plan is still being worked out. And he knew the appointed time of when Jesus would come in to that city one last time. And he would leave triumphantly through the resurrection, which we'll celebrate in one week. Friday, we're going to have a service here. We're going to remember. I don't want to call it a celebration, but I want to remember the cross. We sung about the cross this morning. I want to, we need to remember the blood of Christ and the sufferings and everything that He suffered for us so that we know in the resurrection that we have eternal life for those who put their faith in Him. You know, you've got to put your faith in Christ or you're not going to make it. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, guess what? When you die, you're going to, uh, you know, it's a separation of the sheep and goats. He says, away from me, I never knew you. We have this life right now to make it. We have one chance to make it right, and that's right here while we're breathing. And we, I don't know about you, but we need, I want to anyway, I want to bring as many people to heaven as I possibly can. Because it's all in Him. It's all we got. And one another. And so it's Palm Sunday. It's Palm Sunday. We come to... uh, Chapter 21, and we've been looking at uh, verses 20, we're in 26, and I told you two weeks ago how Jesus was just coming off a very, very, very long Wednesday. He cleansed the temple before that, and then the next day he goes and teaches in that temple, and that began his long Wednesday, if you remember what I was talking about a couple weeks ago. And it was that twilight, it was at the end of that day when his disciples came to him on the Mount of Olives. And asked him, when will this be? What are the signs? And Jesus gives them the, the time, or I mean, gives them the, uh, uh, the, the, what you can look for in the end times. He doesn't give them the when question, other than just look for the signs, and here are the signs. And so Jesus then brings and reels them back in and says, not too much, not, you know, just in, in, a, in two days, in a, just a few days. I'm going to suffer for you, and I'm going to go to the cross for you. And the disciples, when they witnessed all the horrific things that happened on the cross, they see their beloved friend die on the cross, the Messiah die on the cross. They were devastated. They didn't know what to do until Jesus appeared to them. And that was their motivation to go out from there on to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I want to back up from that time into Matthew 21, 
which is why we're here today to celebrate and to remember the triumphal entry. He would come in in a triumphal entry. They would be praising, singing the hosannas. Hosanna to God in the highest. Glory to God. And, and their cheering would turn to crucify Him. Crucify Him on the Passover. Now think about it. Jesus dies on Friday. And he was the sacrificial lamb for eternal life. Because he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody get to him except through me. Nobody get to, to the Father except through me. See, the, the lamb that they had, and if you go back into Exodus chapter 12, you can read the story, it's like from verses 1 through 30. And you would see that they would put the blood of the lamb God gave him instruction to put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. And when God would come down and he saw the blood on, on, the, on the doorpost, he would pass over and he wouldn't take the firstborn. But see, that was temporary. That was temporary. And all that time they continued with the animal sacrifice until finally Jesus, the propitiation, the, 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 the one and final sacrifice would come and die for you and me and guess what? We won't need to sacrifice a lamb, an animal, ever again. Why? Because he was the sacrificial lamb. I saw on a, a reader board uh, when I was down in, uh, or up in Illinois, over there, whatever that is, up and over. And it said, you know what? Easter, for all those who don't want to hear this for their kids, I'm going to say it anyway. Easter is not about the bunny. It's about the lamb. It's not about the bunny. And, and I tell people that here all the time. I'm not going to mask it over. Yeah, we'll, we'll do the Easter egg hunt and stuff like that. But you know what? It's not about eggs. It's not about candy. It's about Jesus Christ who came and gave His life for us so that we can have eternal life. It's not about anything secular or anything that we want to mask over to celebrate a bunny. No. It's about the Lamb, the sacrificial Lamb. And that's Jesus Christ. Let's pray and then we'll look at it in our, our verse. Lord, thank you so much for all that you're going to do today. Open our hearts and our minds to receive your word, Lord Jesus. And I pray, God, that you would be glorified in all that we do today. Open our hearts and our minds today, Lord, and help us to be different. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, it says, now when they drew, <clears throat> so much I could say here, so much I want to say. I'll try and get us out of here on time, okay? Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage. At the Mount of Olives. Now, if you remember, Bethany is just right across. You know, if you're standing in the East Gate, you look over the Mount of Olives, and Bethany would just be just a little bit um, over and just over the hill there, okay? In the vicinity, in the vicinity of the Mount of Olives, okay? That's where that's at. We talked about the location of that. And he goes, it's the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, go, to the, go into the village opposite of you, and immediately... You will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord is, has need of them. And immediately he will send them. All is done that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by the prophet, saying, Now you can go into Isaiah 62.11 and Zechariah uh, Zechariah 9.9, and you would see this scripture. It says, listen to this, okay? This is great. This is 500 years before this even happens. You know, people, and I say this all the time, I just can't believe people say that the Bible isn't true and the Bible is just a bunch of fairy tales. No, it's the inspired Word of God. And Rudy said it this morning. He said, you know, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God is therefore proper for uh, correction, reproof, for instruction, and righteousness so that the man of God can be thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's what the Bible says. It's the inspired Word of God. Old and New Testament, It's relevant. We can see what was predicted. We can see it coming to fruition and coming to pass. So 500 years. It says in, in verse 5, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. This is long before Jesus ever rode in. Now tell me, Scripture doesn't line up. When this was foretold, and it comes to pass. And here Jesus comes riding on a donkey. So it goes on in verse 6, so the disciples went 
and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set them, or set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitude who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Listen to this, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They believed. You know, um, when, they, when Jesus was over in Bethany and people, the multitude, some of that multitude came around Jesus, do you know why they came? They wanted to see Lazarus, the one whom he raised, raised from the dead. And here they are now, they're shouting the hosannas, praise God, glory to God in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. And it says, and when they had come to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. But Jesus was more than a prophet, wasn't he? Jesus was the Messiah. He was the King of kings. He was the Lord of lords. He is the only way. He is the truth. He is the way. He is the power. He is the salvation. God sent His only Son. There is no way the world can be saved without Him. I'll tell you something, and I think Rick said this last time, Buddha won't save you. Jehovah, um, um, the Jehovah's Witness can't save you. The Hindus can't save you. There's only one. And when I was raised, and I came to that scripture that he says that I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus was doing one of two things, but he could not be doing both. He is either telling the truth or he is lying. I believe he is the Son of God, and I believe that he died for my sins, and I know because I have the Holy Spirit dwelling in me because I've given my life to Jesus Christ, that he is the only way. Amen? He is the only way there is. We have the good news, the message of Jesus Christ, the salvation into the world. And we need to go out into that world and spread the Bibles, spread the Word. And we need, to, we, need to, we need God in our government again, amen? We need God in our schools again. We need God in our homes again. We need God in the lives and the hearts of the people that He came to save. And we are throwing Him away and to the side. He comes in in a triumphal entry. It was predicted many, many years before He came in. That he would come in on a donkey. We can see prophecy being fulfilled. We have the evidence and the proofs. We can show it to people. And yet the world continues to turn away from God as they would just a few days later and put him on a cross. Put Jesus, the Messiah, on a cross. You know, it's just three chapters from 26 27 and 28. We would see the arrest of Jesus in 26, 47 through 56. We would see Jesus before the Sanhedrin in 26, 57 through 58. We would see Peter and others, but we would see Peter deny Christ in chapter 26, 69 through 75. We would see and witness, we can see and witness the trial of Jesus. In chapter 27, 1 through 26, we, get the, we can see and witness and, and see this, this horrific execution of Jesus in chapter 27, 57 through 61. Oh. We can see all of that. We, can, we witness, we can read about it and the things that happened and you can go through the Gospels and you can pull all that out. But in chapter 28, it's like a countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we have the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And it's because of Him we have salvation. And we need to go and spread the good news out there because He died for us. And we're going to see it this Friday. We have Good Friday service. Please come out to that. But we have, we're going to witness all these things that happen in this week, this one week. 
And we're going to be able to see and witness the resurrection, our Savior, our salvation through Jesus Christ. Don't take this lightly. Jesus came to die and died for anyone who would put their faith in Him. The question is, do you believe? If you don't, then you need to. You need to begin by surrendering your life and repenting of your sins and inviting Christ into your life. And look up to Him. Know that He died for you. He was on the cross for you. He was resurrected for you. He sits at the right hand of the Father for you. Interceding for you. And all we have to do is turn our heart toward heaven. And toward home. To Jesus Christ. He comes in in a triumphal entry. He will go out in a resurrection. And as we saw in our Bible study in Acts, we've been looking about the ascension. The ascension isn't talked about a whole lot. But it was just as miraculous. Jesus ascends into heaven. He, all of the, the disciples are standing there and whoever else was looking up there. Could you imagine what that would have looked like? And, and, and two angels and two people come and they, they tell them, they go, why are you looking up in heaven? Well, the same way he went, he is coming again. Amen? He, he will come and he will plant his feet. You know where he's going to plant his feet? Right there, the Mount of Olives. And you know, if you go into the, the Old Testament, we've looked at this already. What's going to happen? The earth is going to shake and that gate is going to be opened up. If you look at that east gate right now, as we showed, if you look at that, it's blocked up. As prophecy said, it would be. It was blocked up about in the 1500s by the Ottoman Turks. And you know, on one side of that uh, gate, you know what's planted there or what, what they've put there? A Muslim cemetery. I don't know if you knew that or not. Islamic cemetery. Well, they, re, one of the reasons was they don't believe a rabbi would go through that cemetery to the gate. Well, if they didn't believe in Jesus Christ, why put it there anyway? But you know what? Because that gate is blocked up, you know Jesus is going to come back. He's going to plant his foot on the ground and the earth is going to shake and that gate that's blocked up is going to split in two and he's going to right in another time. Amen? That's something to get excited about. And then, we will reign forever with him. Now, granted, it goes like this. Let me just give a synopsis to it, okay? We're in a church age. I've showed you through Daniel chapter 9, and I've showed you all kinds of evidence of where we are, and, and what the time is running out. We can see the signs of the times right now. Things are escalating. Things are getting worse. They're not going to get better. Things are going to get worse. And then, I believe in the rapture right before the tribulation. We've talked about all that. Jesus is going to come down part way. The dead will rise, and those who are still alive will rise, and we'll meet Him in the air. And then there's going to be a seven-year tribulation. You don't want to be here for that. And right after the tribulation, well, actually in the middle of the tribulation, the, it's going to be called the abomination of desolation. He's going to, you know, Satan, the Antichrist, is going, to, is going to set himself up in the temple, the holy place, the Bible calls it. It's a temple. And the, um, there's going to be three and a half years of, of chaos and destruction. We've seen all that. And then there's going to be a thousand year millennial reign of Christ and then one final battle and then it will be the end. I don't know about you, but I'm reminded through Palm Sunday, through the Scriptures, through um, uh, when we celebrate, uh, I don't know why we call it Good Friday, uh, and then the resurrection, I'm reminded of all the love that God has for me. And all the love that God has for you. And I don't want you to miss out on it. And He doesn't want you to miss out on it. So take today, this Palm Sunday, spend it with your family remembering or spread the Gospel of Jesus Christ like you have an opportunity like I did with Skyla this morning and prayed with her on the phone because Jesus is our Savior. Amen. Thank you.